The Art of Politics by James Bramston. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Art of Politics, in imitation of Horace's Art of Poetry. If to a human face Sir James should draw a gelding's mane and feathers of macaw, a lady's bosom and a tail of cod, who could help laughing at a sight so odd? just such a monster sirs pray think before ye when you behold one man both whig and tory not more extravagant are drunkard's dreams than low church politics with high church schemes painters you'll say may their own fancies use and free-born britons may their party choose that's true i own but can one piece be drawn for dove and dragon elephant and fawn speakers professed who gravity pretend with motley sentiments their speeches blend begin like patriots and like courtiers end some love to roar the constitution's broke and others on the nation's debts to joke some rail they hate the commonwealth so much whatever the subject be against the dutch while others with more fashionable fury begin with turnpikes and conclude with flurry some when the affair was blenheim's glorious battle declaimed against importing irish cattle but you from whatever side you take your name like anna's motto always be the same outsides deceive tis hard the truth to know parties from quaint denominations flow as scotch and irish antiquaries show the low are said to take fanatics parts the high are bloody papists in their hearts caution and fear to highest faults have run in pleasing both the parties you please none who in the house affects declaiming airs wails in change alley pains in fish street bears some metaphors some handkerchiefs display these peep in hats while those with buttons play and make me think it repetition day there knights haranguing hug a neighbouring post and are but quorum orators at most sooner than thus my want of sense expose i deck out bandy legs with gold clocked hose or wear a toupee wig without a nose nay i would sooner have thy fizz i swear surintendant des plaisirs d'angleterre ye weekly writers of seditious news take care your subjects artfully to choose wide panegyric strong or boldly rail you cannot miss preferment or a jail wrap up your poison well nor fear to say what was a lie last night is truth to-day tell this sink that arrive at rid path praise let abel roper your ambition raise to lie fit opportunity observe saving some double meaning in reserve but oh you'll merit everlasting fame if you can quibble on sir robert's name in state affairs use not the vulgar phrase talk words scarce known in good queen bessie's days new terms let war or traffic introduce and try to bring persuading ships in use coin words in coining never mind common sense provided the original be french like south sea stock expressions rise and fall king edward's words are now no words at all did aught our predecessor's genius cramp sure every reign may have its proper stamp all sublunary things of death partake what alteration does a century make kings and comedians all are mortal found caesar and pinkethman are underground what's not destroyed by time's devouring hand where's troy and where's the maypole in the strand peas cabbages and turnips once grew where now stands new bond street and a newer square such piles of buildings now rise up and down london itself seems going out of town our fathers crossed from fulham in a wherry their sons enjoy a bridge at putney ferry 
think we that modern words eternal are to pay and tompion cousins and colmar hereafter will be called by some plain man a wig a watch a pair of stays a fan to things themselves if time such change affords can there be any trusting to our words to screen good ministers from public rage and how with party madness to engage we learn from edison's immortal page the jacobite's ridiculous opinion is seen from tickle's letter to avignon but who puts caleb's country craftsman out is still a secret and the world's in doubt not long since parish clerks with saucy airs applied king david's psalms to state affairs some certain tunes to politics belong on both sides drunkards love a party song if full across the speaker's chair i go can i be said the rules of the house to know i'll ask nor give offence without intent nor through mere sheepishness be impudent in acts of parliament avoid sublime nor ever address his majesty in rhyme an act of parliament's a serious thing begins with year of lord and year of king keeps close to form in every word is strict when it would pains and penalties inflict soft words suit best petitioners intent soft words o ye petitioners of kent whoever harangues before he gives his vote should send sweet language from a tuneful throat pulpney the coldest breast with zeal can fire and roman thoughts by attic style inspire he knows from tedious wranglings to beguile the serious house into a cheerful smile when the great patriot paints his anxious fears for england's safety i am lost in tears but when dull speakers strive to move compassion i pity their poor hearers not the nation unless young members to the purpose speak i fall a laughing or i fall asleep can men their inward faculties control is not the tongue an index to the soul laugh not in time of service to your god nor bully when in custody of the rod look grave and be from jokes and grinning far when brought to sue for pardon at the bar if then you let your ill-timed wit appear knights citizens and burgesses will sneer for land or trade not the same notion sire the city merchant and the country squire their climes are distant though one cause unites the lairds of scotland and the cornish knights to likelihood your characters confine don't turn sir paul out let sir paul resign in walpole's voice if factions ill intend give the two universities a friend give maidston wit and elegance refined to both the palhams give the scipio's mind to cartred learning eloquence and parts to george the second give all english hearts sometimes fresh names in politics produce and factions yet unheard of introduce and if you dare attempt a thing so new make to itself the flying squadron true to speak is free no member is debarred but funds and national accounts are hard safer on common topics to discourse the malt tax and the military force on these each coffee-house will lend a hint besides a thousand things that are in print but steal not word for word nor thought for thought for you'll be teased to death if you are caught when factious leaders boast increasing strength go not too far nor follow every length leave room for change turn with a grace about and swear you left them when you found them out with art and modesty your part maintain and talk like colonel titus not like lane the trading knight with rants his speech begins sun moon and stars and dragons saints and kings but titus said with his uncommon sense when the exclusion bill was in suspense i hear a lion in the lobby roar say mr speaker shall we shut the door and keep him there or shall we let him in to try if we can turn him out again 
some mighty blusterers impeach with noise and call their private cry the nation's voice from folios of accounts they take their handles and the whole balance proves a pound of candles as if paul's cupola were brought to bed after hard labour of a small pin's head some rufus some the conqueror bring in and some from julius caesar stays begin a cunning speaker can command his chaps and when the house is not in humour stops in falsehood probability employs nor his old lies with newer lies destroys if when you speak you'd hear a needle fall and make the frequent hear hymns rend the wall in matters suited to your taste engage remembering still your quality and age thy task be this young knight and hear my song what politics to every age belong when babes can speak babes should be taught to say king george the second's health huzzay huzzay boys should learn latin for prince william's sake and girls louisa their example make more loves the youth just come to his estate to range the fields than in the house debate more he delights in favourite jowler's tongue than in will shippen or sir william young if in one chase he can two horses kill he cares not tuppence for the land tax bill loud in his wine in women not over nice he damns his uncles if they give advice votes as his father did when there's a call but had much rather never vote at all we take a different turn at twenty-six and lofty thoughts on some lord's daughter fix with man in power strict friendship we pursue with some considerable post in view a man of forty she is to change his note one way to speak and the other way to vote careful his tongue in passion to command avoids the bar and speaker's reprimand in bags the old man lets his treasure rust afraid to use it or the funds to trust when stocks are low he wants the heart to buy and through much caution sees them rise too high thinks nothing rightly done since seventy eight swears present members do not talk but prate in charles the second's days says he ye prigs tories were tories then and whigs were whigs alas this is a lamentable truth we lose in age as we advance in youth i laugh when twenty will like eighty talk and old sir john with polly peachum walk now as to double or to false returns when pockets suffer and when anger burns o oh, thing surpassing faith night strives with night when both have bribed and neither's in the right the bailiff's self is sent for in that case and all the witnesses had face to face selected members soon the fraud unfold in full committee of the house tis told the incredible corruption is destroyed the chairman's angry and the election void those who would captivate the well-bred throng should not too often speak nor speak too long church nor church matters ever turn to sport nor make st stephen's chapel dover court the speaker when the commons are assembled may to the grecian chorus be resembled tis his the young and modest to espouse and see none draw or challenge in the house tis his old hospitality to use and three good printers for the house to choose to let each representative be heard and take due care the chaplain be preferred to hear no motion made that's out of joint and where he spies his member make his point to night's new chosen in old time would come the county trumpet and perhaps a drum now when a burgess new elect appears come train bands horse guards foot guards grenadiers when the majority the town clerk tells his honour pays the fiddles waits and bells harangues the mob and is as wise and great as the most mystic oracle of state when the duke's grandson for the county stood his beef was fat and his october good his lordship took each ploughman by the fist drunk to their sons 
their wives and daughters kissed but when strong beer their freeborn hearts inflames they sell him bargains and they call him names thus is it deemed in english nobles wise to stoop for no one reason but to rise election matters shun with cautious awe o oh, all ye judges learned in the law a judge by bribes as much himself degrades as duchess dowager by masquerades try not with jests obscene to force a smile nor lard your speech with mother needham's style let not your tongue to old fieldismus run and kibberismus with abhorrence shun let not your looks affected words disgrace nor join with silver tongue a brazen face let not your hands like tall boys be employed and the mad rant of tragedy avoid just in your thoughts in your expression clear neither too modest nor too bold appear others in vain a like success will boast he speaks most easy who has studied most a peer's pert air has to the common spoke a vile reflection or a bawdy joke called to the house of lords of this beware tis what the bishop's bench will never bear among the commons is such freedom shown they lash each other and attack the throne yet so unskilful or so fearful some for nine that speak there's nine and forty dumb when james i at great britannia's helm ruled this word-clipping and word-coining realm no words to royal favour made pretence but what agreed in sound and clashed in sense thrice happy he how great that speaker's praise whose every period looked an hundred ways what then we now with just abhorrence shun the trifling quibble and the schoolboy's pun though no great connoisseur i make a shift just to find out a durfee from a swift i can discern with half an eye i hope mist from joe edison from euston pope i know a farce from one of congreve's plays and kibber's opera from johnny gay's when pert defoe his saucy papers writ he from a cart was pillared for his wit by mob was pelted half a morning space and rotten eggs besmeared his yellow face the censor then improved the listening aisle and held both parties in an artful smile a scribbling crew now pinching winter brings that spare no earthly nor no heavenly things nor church nor state nor treasurers nor kings but blasphemy displeases all the town and for defying scripture law and crown woolston should pay his fine and lose his gown it must be owned the journals try all ways to merit their respective parties praise they jar in every article from spain a war these threaten those a peace maintain though lie they will to give em all their due in foreign matters and domestic too whoever thou art that wouldst the postman write enquire all day and hearken all the night sure gazetteers and writers of courants might soon exceed the intelligence of france to be outdone old england should refuse as in her arms so in her public news but truth is scarce the scene of action large and correspondence an excessive charge there are who say no man can be a wit unless for newgate or for bedlam fit let pamphleteers abusive satire write to show a genius is to show a spite that author's works will never be reckoned good who has not been where curl the printer stood alas poor me you may my fortune guess i write and yet humanity profess though nothing can delight a modern judge without ill nature and a private grudge i love the king the queen and royal race i like the government but want no place too low in life to be a justice i and for a constable thank god too high was never in a plot my brain's not hurt i politics to poetry convert a politician must as i have read be furnished in the first place with a head a head well filled with machiavellian brains 
and stuffed with precedents of former reigns must journals read and magna carta quote but acts still wiser if he speaks by note learns well his lesson and never fears mistakes for ready money ready speakers makes he must instructions and credentials draw pay well the army and protect the law give to his country what's his country's due but first help brothers sons and cousins too he must treat grocious upon war and peace and the twelve judges salary increase he must oblige old friends and new allies and find out ways and means for fresh supplies he must the weaver's grievances redress and merchants wants in merchants words express dramatic poets that expect the bays should cull our histories for party plays wickford's ambassador should fill their head and the state trials carefully be read for what is dryden's muse and otway's plots to the earl of essex or the queen of scots tis said that queen elizabeth could speak at twelve years old right attic full mouth greek hence was the student forced at greek to drudge if he would be a bishop or a judge divines and lawyers now don't think they thrive till promised places of man still alive how old is such a one in such a post the answer is he's seventy-five almost the archbishop and the master of the rolls neither is young and one's as old as paul's will man that asks such questions publish books like learned hookers or chief justice cooks on tender subjects with discretion touch and never say too little or too much on trivial matters flourishes are wrong motions for candles never should be long or if you move in case of sudden rain to shut the windows speak distinct and plain unless you talk good english downright sense can you be understood by sergeant spence new stories always should with truth agree or truth's half-sister probability scarce could tufts rabbits and pretended throws on half the honourable house impose when cato speaks young shallow runs away and swears it is so dull he cannot stay when rakes begin on blasphemy to border bromley and hanmer cry aloud to order the point is this with manly sense and ease to inform the judgment and the fancy please praise it deserves nor difficult the thing at once to serve one's country and one's king such speeches bring the wealthy tonsons gain from age to age they minute it remain as precedents for george the twentieth reign is there a man on earth so perfect found who never mistook a word in sense or sound not blundering but persisting is the fault no mortal sin is lapsus lingua thought clerks may mistake considering who tis from i pardon little slips in clair dom com but let me tell you i'll not take his part if every thursday he date die mart of sputtering mortals tis the fatal curse by mending blunders still to make em worse men sneer when gets a lucky thought and stare if windham should be nodding caught but sleeping's what the wisest man may do should the committee chance to sit till two not unlike paintings principles appear some best at distance some when we are near the love of politics so vulgar's grown my landlord's party from his sign is known mark of french wine see ormond's head appear while marlborough's face directs to beer and beer some buchanan's the pope's head some like best the devil's tavern is a standing jest whoever you are that have a seat secure duly returned and from petition sure stick to your friends in whatsoever you say with strong aversion shun the middle way the middle way the best we sometimes call but tis in politics no way at all a trimmer's what both parties turn to sport by country hated and despised at court who would in earnest to a party come must give his vote not whimsical but plumb there is no medium 
for the term in vogue on either side is honest man or rogue can it be difficult our minds to show where all the difference is yes or no in all professions time and pains give skill without hard study dare physicians kill can he that never read statutes or reports give chamber counsel or urge law in courts but every whipster knows affairs of state nor fears on nicest subjects to debate a knight of eighteen hundred pounds a year who minds his head if his estate be clear sure he may speak his mind and tell the house he matters not the government allows lack learning knights these things are safely said to friends in private at the bedford head but in the house before your tongue runs on consult sir james lord william's dead and gone words to recall is in no member's power one single word may send you to the tower the wronged to help the lawless to restrain thrice every year in ancient egbert's reign the members to the mitchell ye met went in after ages called the parliament early the mitchell ye met did begin then roll their statutes on a parchment skin for impious treason hence no room was left for murder for polygamy or theft since when the senate's power both sexes know from hops and claret soap and calico now wholesome laws young senators bring in gainst jails attorneys bribery and gin since such the nature of the british state the power of parliament so old and great ye squires and irish lords tis worth your care to be returned for city town or shire by sheriff bailiff constable or mayor some doubt which to a seat has best pretends a man of substance or a man of sense but never any member feats will do without a headpiece and a pocket too sense is required the depth of things to reach and money gives authority to speech a man of business won't till evening dine abstains from women company and wine from fig's new theatre he'll miss a night though cocks and bulls and irish women fight nor sultry sun nor storms of soaking rain the man of business from the house detain nor speaks he for no reason but to say i am a member and i spoke to-day i'll speak sometimes you'll hear his lordship cry because some speak that have less sense than i the man that has both land and money too may wonders in a trading borrow do they'll praise his venison and commend his port turn their two former members into sport and if he likes it satirize the court but at a feast tis difficult to know from real friends an undiscovered foe the man that swears he will the pole secure and pawns his soul that your election's sure suspect that man beware all is not right he's ten to one a corporation bite alderman pond a downright honest man would say i cannot help you or i can to spend your money sir is all a jest matters are settled set your heart at rest we've made a compromise and sir you know that sends one member high and the other low but if his good advice you would not take he'd scorn your supper and your punch forsake leave you of mighty interest to brag and poll two voices like sir robert fagg parliamenteering is a sort of itch that will too oft unwary knights bewitch too good estates sir harry clodpole spent sate thrice but spoke not once in parliament two good estates are gone who'll take his word oh should his uncle die he'd spend a third he'd buy a house his happiness to crown within a mile of some good borough town tag rag and bobtail to sir harry's run men that have votes and women that have none sons daughters grandsons with his honour dine he keeps a public house without a sign cobblers and smith extolled the ensuing choice 
and drunken tailors boast their right of voice dearly the free-born neighbourhood is bought they never leave him while he's worth a groat so leech his stick nor quit the bleeding wound till off they drop with skinfuls to the ground finis end of poem this recording is in the public domain beyond the years by paul lawrence dunbar read for librivox dot org by winston tharp one beyond the years the answer lies beyond where brood the grieving skies and night drops tears where faith broad chastened smiles to rise and doft its fears and carping sorrow pines and dies beyond the years two beyond the years the prayer for rest shall beat no more within the breast the darkness clears and morn perched on the mountain's crest her form uprears the day that is to come is best beyond the years three beyond the years the soul shall find that endless peace for which it pined for light appears and to the eyes that still were blind with blood and tears their sight shall come all unconfined beyond the years and a poem this recording is in the public domain Carry On by Robert W. Serpice, read for LibriVox.org, by Larry Wilson. It's easy to fight when everything's right, and you're mad with the thrill and the glory. It's easy to cheer when victory's near, and wallow in fields that are gory. It's a different song when everything's wrong, when you're feeling infernally mortal, when it's ten against one and hope there is none. Buck up, little soldier, and chortle carry on carry on there isn't much punch in your blow you're glaring and staring and hitting out blind you're muddy and bloody but never you mind carry on carry on you haven't the ghost of a show it's looking like death but while you've a breath carry on my son carry on and so in the strife of the battle of life it's easy to fight when you're winning it's easy to slave and starve and be brave when the dawn of success is beginning but the man who can meet despair and defeat with a cheer there's the man of god's choosing the man who can fight to heaven's own height is the man who can fight when he's losing carry on carry on things never were looming so black but show that you haven't a cowardly streak and though you're unlucky you never are weak carry on carry on Brace up for another attack. It's looking like hell, but you can never tell. Carry on, old man, carry on. There are some who drift out in the deserts of doubt, and some who in brutishness wallow. There are others, I know, who in piety go because of a heaven to follow. But to labor with zest and to give of your best for the sweetness and joy of the giving, to help folks along with a hand and a song, why, there's the real sunshine of living. Carry on, carry on. Fight the good fight and true. Believe in your mission. Greet life with a cheer. There's big work to do, and that's why you are here. Carry on, carry on. Let the world be the better for you. And at last when you die, let this be your cry. Carry on, my soul, carry on. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Change Song by Constance Lindsay Skinner Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Change Song Death's first snows are drifting on my cheek. Pale are my lips as the kiss of Sinuza. I lie low and still. Near me crouch my silent kinsmen. They hold the breath and wait the hour of wailing. 
they have wrapped the scarlet morning blanket round the shoulders of the oldest man he has taken their sorrow he droops at my door like a bleeding hawk where the eagles have battled he is so old he feels not any grief his heart is cold in his ears no sound is and in his eyes no light therefore have my kinsmen given him their griefs because the dawn leaps clear into their eyes because the sound of women's feet rustling on the cedar mats when the torch is blown calls sweetly to their ears and their hearts are beating for the hunt they may not bear the sorrow of my passing we have known strong joys together i take your loves my kinsmen i leave you of no griefs sing my kinsmen when ye swing me to the topmost branches of the cedar sweet smelling arms of cedar reach for me tenderly receive me hold me in the last caress under open sky sing my kinsmen when the oldest man takes his lone trail through the forest he will wear no morning blanket when he comes again tomorrow he will say rejoice i have borne your grief afar i have buried it deep the place is not known the wind of your singing shall rock me in the arms of my mother the cedar yet there is a sweeter song my kinsman it is the change song of supreme one i hear it now he chants it to my heart because pale death has crossed my threshold and has clasped my hand fear not sing supreme one i am making pure making pure i destroy not life i am life maker the oldest man has entered the forest ah ah my kinsmen are wailing they saw me depart with death into the white change but i go on and on and i sing the change song of supreme one ha kyo hos la no ya e mi la la o la ga hi la wo and a poem this recording is in the public domain Childhood by Richard Aldington Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Childhood 1. The bitterness, the misery, the wretchedness of childhood Put me out of love with God I can't believe in God's goodness I can believe in many avenging gods Most of all, I believe in gods of bitter dullness cruel local gods who scared my childhood two i've seen people put a chrysalis in a matchbox to see they told me what sort of moth would come but when it broke its shell it slipped and stumbled and fell about its prison and tried to climb to the light for space to dry its wings that's how i was somebody found my chrysalis and shut it in a matchbox my shriveled wings were beaten shed their colors in dusty scales before the box was opened for the moth to fly three i hate that town i hate the town i lived in when i was little i hate to think of it there were always clouds smoke rain in that dingy little valley it rained it always rained i think i never saw the sun until i was nine and then it was too late everything's too late after the first seven years the long street we lived in was duller than a drain and nearly as dingy there were the big college and the pseudo-gothic town hall there were the sordid provincial shops, the grocers, and the shops for women. The shop where I bought transfers, 
and the piano and gramophone shop where i used to stand staring at the huge shiny pianos and the pictures of a white dog looking into a gramophone how dull and greasy and gray and sordid it was on wet days it was always wet i used to kneel on a chair and look at it from the window the dirty yellow trams dragged noisily along with a clatter of wheels and bells and a humming of wires overhead they threw up the filthy rainwater from the hollow lines and then the water ran back full of brownish foam bubbles there was nothing else to see it was all so dull except a few gray legs under shiny black umbrellas running along the gray shiny pavements sometimes there was a wagon whose horses made a strange loud hollow sound with their hoofs through the silent rain and there was a gray museum full of dead birds and dead insects and dead animals and a few relics of the romans dead also there was a seafront a long asphalt walk with a bleak road beside it three piers a row of houses and a salt dirty smell from the little harbor i was like a moth like one of those gray emperor moths which flutter through the vines at capri and that damned little town was my matchbox against whose sides i beat and beat until my wings were torn and faded and dingy as that damned little town four at school it was just as dull as that dull high street the front was dull the high street and the other street were dull and there was a public park i remember and that was damned dull too with its bed of geraniums no one was allowed to pick and its clipped lawns you weren't allowed to walk on and the goldfish pond you mustn't paddle in and the gate made out of a whale's jawbones and the swings which were for board school children and its gravel paths and on sundays they rang the bells from baptist and evangelical and catholic churches they had a salvation army i was taken to a high church the parson's name was mowbray which is a good name but he thinks too much of it that's what i heard people say i took a little black book to that cold gray damp smelling church and i had to sit on a hard bench wriggle off it to kneel down when they sang psalms and wriggle off it to kneel down when they prayed and then there was nothing to do except to play trains with the hymn books there was nothing to see nothing to do nothing to play with except that in an empty room upstairs there was a large tin box containing reproductions of the magna carta of the declaration of independence and a letter from raleigh after the armada there were also several packets of stamps yellow and blue guatemala parrots blue stags and red baboons and birds from sarawak indians and men of war from the united states and the green and red portraits of king francobello of italy five i don't believe in god i do believe in avenging gods who plague us for sins we never sinned but who avenge us that's why i'll never have a child never shut up in a chrysalis in a matchbox for the moth to spoil and crush its bright colors beating its wings against the dingy prison wall and a poem this recording is in the public domain the christian warfare by isaac watts read for LibriVox.org by sonia the christian warfare stand up my soul shake off thy fears and gird the gospel armor on march to the gate of endless joy where thy great captain saviour's gone 
hell and thy sins resist thy course but hell and sin are vanquished foes thy jesus nailed them to the cross and sang the triumph when he rose what though the prince of darkness rage and waste the fury of his spite eternal chains confine him down to fiery deeps and endless night what though thine inward lusts rebel tis but a struggling gasp for life the weapons of victorious grace shall slay thy sins and end the strife then let my soul march boldly on press forward to the heavenly gate there peace and joy eternal reign and glittering robes for conquerors wait there shall i wear a starry crown and triumph in almighty grace while all the armies of the skies join in my glorious leader's praise end of poem this recording is in the public domain Cleopatra by Rosa Vertner Jeffrey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Queen of beauty through the ages, Queen of love in storied pages, Cleopatra, star of Egypt, Blazing through the mists of time, down long centuries descending thy wild witcheries are blending with half that poets sing to us of glory love and crime through the battle's red wreck springing hark that royal paean ringing enchantress of the nile beloved of heroes and of kings germ of a sumptuous power alexandria's passion flower to egypt's weird old ruins still thy mystic splendour clings queen of beauty crowned of nations fame still pours her bright libations to one whose witcheries were like the potent spells of wine turned from triumphs rich with beauty heroes drunk upon thy beauty tore off their laurel crowns to where the myrtles plucked from thine where the lotus blooms are sleeping there are subtle memories steeping the scented deeps of eastern gloom starred by their blossoms pale memories of one fragrant hour when the breath of every flower was lost amid the odours swept from off thy silken sail and the harps tuned to thy glory and the bards who sang thy story left a mystic echoed music to haunt the classic marge of that far-off eastern river where will linger on forever a shadow of the splendours trailed behind thy royal barge dark-browed sorceress subtlest woman there was one most noble roman who mocked the wiles which erst enslaved rome's purple royalty who had shown thee to the million his fair captive as aurelian the assyrian queen but thou didst scorn to grace his victory when paled thy star of destiny when egypt and mark antony were lost to thee the future was too dark to lure thee on cleopatra fairest woman too frail too proud too human to live with glory vanishing and love forever gone End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Crossroad Epitaph by Amy Levy Read for LibriVox.org by Nuria Am Kreuzweg wird begraben, wer selber brachte sich um. When first the world grew dark on me, I called on God, yet came not he. 
whereon as viewer walks my lord on love i called but love came not when a worse evil did befall death on thee only did i call end of poem this recording is in the public domain cupid lost by jacob katz read for LibriVox .org by april 6090 california united states of america the child of venus wanton wild the slyest rogue that ever smiled has lately strayed where who shall guess his mother pines in sad distress she calls the boy she sighs complains but still no news of cupid gains for though her sorrow grows apace none knows the urchin's resting place she therefore vows the boy shall be cried o'er the country publicly if there be any who can tell where little cupid now doth dwell a fit reward he shall enjoy if he track out the truant boy his recompense a fragrant kiss from venus's ruby mouth of bliss but he who firmly holds the knave shall yet a sweeter guerdon have now lest ye should mistake the white list to his form described aright he is a little wayward thing that's panoplied on fiery wing two pinions like a swan he carries and never for an instant tarries but now is here and now is there and couples many a curious pair his eyes like two bright stars are glowing and ever sidelong glances throwing he bears about a crafty bow and wounds before the wounded know his dart though glit to please the view is dipped in bitter venom too his body though tis bare to sight has overthrown full many a night his living torch though mean and small oft makes the hardiest warrior fall the highest dames with care invades and spares not even the tenderest maids nay what is worse than all the rest he sometimes wounds his mother's breast if such an urchin should be found proclaim the joyous news around and should the boy attempt to fly then seize him right courageously but if you have the child at last be careful that you hold him fast or else the elusive bird he'll play and vanish in thin air away yet if he seem to pine and grieve you must not heed him nor believe nor trust his tears and feigned distress his winning glance and bland caress but watch his cheek when dimples wreathe it and think that evil lurks beneath it for under his pretended smile are veiled the deepest craft and guile if he a kiss should offer shun the proffered gift or be undone his pretty lips thy heart would sentence to brief delight but long repentance but if the cunning boy would give his dart to you o ne'er receive if you would hope for blissful years the present that so fair appears it is no pledge of love but shame and danger and destroying flame then friends to speak with brevity this wholesome warning take from me let those who seize the wily ranger be on their guard gainst every danger for if they venture too securely misfortunes will assail them surely and if they trust the boy in aught the catchers will themselves be caught end of poem this recording is in the public domain the danish boy by william woodsworth read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter between two sister moorland rills there is a spot that seems to lie sacred to flowerets of the hills and sacred to the sky and in this smooth and open dell there is a tempest-stricken tree a cornerstone by lightning cut the last stone of a lonely hut and in this dell you see a thing no storm can e'er destroy the shadow of a danish boy in clouds above the lark is heard but drops not here to earth for rest within this lonesome nook the bird did never build her nest no beast no bird hath here his home bees wafted on the breezy air pass high above those fragrant bells to other flowers to other dells their burdens do they bear the danish boy walks here alone the lovely dell 
is all his own a spirit of noonday is he yet seems a form of flesh and blood nor piping shepherd shall he be nor herd boy of the wood a regal vest of fur he wears in colour like a raven's wing it fears not rain nor wind nor dew but in the storm tis fresh and blue as budding pines in spring his helmet has a vernal grace fresh as the bloom upon his face a harp is from his shoulder slung resting the harp upon his knee to words of a forgotten tongue he suits its melody of flocks upon the neighboring hills he is the darling and the joy and often when no cause appears the mountain ponies prick their ears they hear the danish boy while in the dell he sings alone beside the tree and cornerstone there sits he in his face you spy no trace of a ferocious air nor ever was a cloudless sky so steady or so fair the lovely danish boy is blessed and happy in his flowery cove from bloody deeds his thoughts are far and yet he warbles songs of war that seem like songs of love for calm and gentle is his mien like a dead boy he is serene end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Dream by Alice Carey Read for LibriVox.org by Brianna I dreamed I had a plot of ground Once when I chanced asleep to drop And that a green hedge fenced it round Cloudy with roses at the top I saw a hundred mornings rise So far a little dream may reach and spring with summer in her eyes, making the chiefest charm of each. A thousand vines were climbing over the hedge, I thought. But as I tried to pull them down forevermore, the flowers dropped off the other side. Waking, I said, these things are signs sent to instruct us that it's ours duly to keep and dress our vines waiting patience for the flowers and when the angel feared of all across my hearth its shadow spread the rose that climbed my garden wall has bloomed the other side i said end of the poem this recording is in the public domain dusk by dubose hayward read for librivox dot org by winston tharp they tell me she is beautiful, my city, that she is colorful and quaint, alone among the cities. But I, I who have known her tenderness, her courage, and her pity, have felt her forces mold me, mind and bone, life after life, up from her first beginning. How can I think of her in wood and stone? To others she has given of her beauty, her gardens and her dim old faded ways, her laughter and her happy drifting hours, glad spendthrift April squandering her flowers, the sharp still wonder of her autumn days. Her chimes that shimmer from St. Michael's steeple across the deep maturity of June, like sunlight slanting over open water under a high blue listless afternoon. But when the dusk is deep upon the harbor, she finds me where her rivers meet and speak. And while the constellations ride the silence high overhead, her cheek is on my cheek. I know her in the thrill behind the dark when sleep brims all her silent thoroughfares. She is the glamour in the quiet park that kindles simple things, like grass and trees. Wistful and wanton as her sea-born airs, bringer of dim, rich, age-old memories. Out on the gloom-deep water, when the nights are choked with fog and perilous and blind, 
She is the faith that tends the calling lights. Hers is the stifled voice of harbor bells, muffled and broken by the mist and wind. Hers are the eyes through which I look on life and find it brave and splendid, and the stir of hidden music shaping all my songs, and these my songs, my all, belong to her. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Forevermore by Rosa Vertner Jeffrey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. After the Raven. As I wandered in the gloaming, unto the seaside roaming, gazing westward, where the evening her golden banner bore, paths of twilight roses crushing, her royal banner flushing, the soft grey ashes strewn along a shadowy sunset shore to the billows never idle chanting vespers in their tidal i whispered shall we meet again beyond yon cloudland shore tell me o oh, thou deep-mouthed ocean with thy murmurous billowy law and the breakers leeward rushing sang softly evermore forever evermore o oh, ye surges upward springing ever sighing ever singing sweet anthems while the summer skies their blessings on you pour o oh, ye green and crested surges where your swelling beauty merges into the fierce wild waves that shout and leap on high and roar won by the storm's devices to seek rich rare sacrifices why did ye hurl that iron ship upon a rock-bound shore strangling a freight of human life ye never can restore one life was mine when shall we meet the waves sobbed evermore forever evermore give me then i cried some token of the promise thou hast spoken interpret the deep meaning of thy wondrous hidden lore when his spirit had uprisen from its fragile earthly prison did it wander to some mystic sphere beyond yon twilight shore our spirits cannot sever he was mine and must be ever with the starbeam on thy bosom tell me ocean i implore is my lost love awaiting me beyond yon purple shore the white surf surging at my feet sighed softly evermore forever evermore then i felt my whole soul yearning to those sad-voiced waves returning when unto me the shadow of that twilight star they bore every fleck of shimmering glory traced a weird fantastic story as erst for the astrologers who read their light of yore seers who passed the spirit portals and read to listening mortals their destiny for good or ill in planetary law be my seer deep sea and tell me does the spirit life restore the love we feel eternal the waves sang evermore forever evermore the western roses withered where the purple twilight gathered and night upon his dusky plume the star of twilight wore down inky pathways trailing swept sable shadows sailing like black-mailed phantoms silently unto an ebon shore all the blazing constellations pledged the sea in bright libations and the sea leaped towards their beakers until every billow bore 
drops of overflowing splendour as with music sad and tender they chanted in yon spirit land he waits thee evermore for ever evermore then adown the silence ringing came a subtle murmur bringing a joy unto my spirit it had never known before down the milky way of heaven came that wondrous anthem woven through its tangled web of glory till the far-off sapphire shore thrilled harmonious devotion to the pulses of the ocean from the foam upon its breakers to its coral shaded floor through the spirit haunted universe and to her heart's deep core above below around me rang one answer evermore forever evermore end of poem this recording is in the public domain the happiest day a poem by edgar allan poe read for LibriVox.org by yasmin hoshnud the happiest day the happiest hour my seared and blighted heart hath known the highest hope of pride and power i feel hath flown of power said i yes such i ween but they have vanished long alas the visions of my youth have been but let them pass and pride what have i now with thee another brow may even inherit the venom thou hast poured on me be still my spirit the happiest day the happiest hour mine eyes shall see have ever seen the brightest glance of pride and power i feel have been but were that hope of pride and power now offered with the pain even then i felt that brightest hour i would not live again for on its wings was dark alloy and as it fluttered fell an essence powerful to destroy a soul that knew it well. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hashish Visions by Rosa Vertner Jeffrey. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Fiery fetters fiercely bound me, globes of golden fire rolled round me jets of violet coloured flame from ruby crested mountains came and floating upward wreathed on high like gorgeous serpents through the sky to whose rich coils the stars of night clung and became like scales of light a crimson sea before me blushed to which ten thousand rivers rushed ten thousand rivers all of flame and as they hissing onward came their burning waters seemed to pour along an opalescent shore well in that red deep far away a myriad opal islands lay with eager wistful gaze i turned to where their dazzling splendours burned with fearful struggles stung by pain i rent my fiery bonds in twain and madly when my limbs were free plunged headlong in that lurid sea whose red and seething billows seemed to mock me as they hissed and screamed while tortured thus scorched to the bone i drifted on with ceaseless moan till near those opal islands cast when dreaming all my anguish past i grasped a smooth and glittering shore in vain then drifted on once more on on till countless isles were passed and then a boiling wave at last spurned flung me from its blazing crest to be at least one moment blessed upon an isle which shone for me the fairest in that wondrous sea but on its cool and polished shore my agony scarce ceased before this beautiful and long-sought goal 
this eldorado of my soul for which i yearned with wild desire was thronged with skeletons of fire that danced around me shrieked my name and scorched me with their tongues of flame till in unutterable pain i prayed that lava sea in vain to bear me from a haunted land to save me from the demon band that seized me with a fiendish laugh and cups of fire then bade me quaff until the withered flesh all peeled from my parched bones and left revealed a skeleton like theirs a shell red as the hottest flames of hell then loud we laughed and wide and far rang out that fiendish laugh ha ha in every wave an echo seemed until the sea with laughter screamed the blazing billows leaped on high and roared their laughter to the sky whose star-scaled serpents from afar hissed back a mocking laugh ha ha we tossed our flaming goblets up and danced and laughed till every cup was drained and still though wrung with pain we quaffed and danced and laughed again till faint with agony a chill of horror through my frame did thrill the fire fiends left me doubly cursed cold freezing yet consumed by thirst i wore a form of flesh again and cried for water but in vain and then an icy slumber fell upon me till the gushing swell of mountain torrents in their strife awakened me to light and life to light and life for now i stood beside a cool deep shaded flood upon a shore so passing fair its beauty brightened my despair a moment while the hope was nursed that i might quench my frantic thirst enchanting pictures bright and fine enamelled on my heart they shine that fresh green shore that clear deep tide whose waves o'er rocks of sapphire glide until at last with wildest leap into a gulf more broad and deep than ten niagaras swift they whirl o'er crystal spars and crags of pearl but lo when on that moss-grown brink i stooped my aching head to drink and sinking there a lotus cup raised it in trembling gladness up my parching lips gave forth a groan to find the water turned to stone a chalice heaped with sapphires bright to mock me with their liquid light jewels a king might proudly wear but which i cursed in my despair and then with bitter anguish flung back to the tide from which they sprung the lotus bloom i would have torn to atoms but as if in scorn of my fierce rage by some weird power i found an alabaster flower whose leaves and stem with matchless sheen of emerald shone superbly green i climbed along the crags of pearl to head the waters in their whirl but when i bent in madness down to where the white spray like a crown of glory on the torrent gleamed though o'er my brow its moisture streamed with lips apart that longed to feel a dewy freshness through them steal upon my parched and swollen tongue a shower of diamond gems was flung oh what were gems to one who yearned for water drops and would have spurned their wealth to sip the dew that sleeps within the harebell's azure deeps upon the shore again i rushed where countless fruits in beauty blushed pomegranates rare and ripe and one whose rind was rifted by the sun revealed unto my ravished sight the crimson pulp 
oh what delight i felt as quick with throbbing heart i tore it eagerly apart expecting then the fruity seed with red and luscious juice to bleed like those which at the far-off south distilled their sweetness in my mouth long long ago when as a child by hope and love and joy beguiled my trusting heart had never grieved to find itself at last deceived but in that strange enchanted rind no liquid sweetness did i find which tempting while it half concealed a mass of rubies now revealed of royal rubies flashing there to mock and madden my despair i plucked an orange when behold within my hand it turned to gold and when from loaded vines i tore the purpled grapes which there did pour their honeyed juices on the ground clusters of amethysts i found if in a desert i had been where gushing waters are not seen nor luscious fruits to tempt in vain less terrible had been the pain of my fierce thirst and as i cried for water fair forms seemed to glide beneath those haunted groves who quaffed from crystal cups bright draughts and laughed derisive laughter soft and clear as they approached me near so near i almost caught their goblets bright when swift they turned in sudden flight and from afar pealed forth those swells of laughter clear as silver bells then others came more fair who reaped the dripping vines and gaily heaped each one within a jasper urn her stores of grapes which seemed to turn beneath their hands to sparkling wine while useless gems they shone in mine a vintage by a river's brink yet no one offered me a drink of wine or water and ere long the chorus of a vintage song came stealing to me whence those maids had vanished mid ambrosial shades in quick pursuit i followed where their voices rippled through the air till blind with anguish cold as death chilled by the south wind's balmy breath yet burnt by torturing thirst within fiercer than memories of sin beneath that lustrous summer sky i lay me down and prayed to die but vainly rose my mournful prayer the king of terrors came not there and sudden darkness like a spell appalling darkness round me fell which reft the earth of light and bloom and steeped my soul in utter gloom i started up the sun had set the torrent poured o'er crags of jet its inky waters and o'er all a black sky hung its funeral pall so black the clouds that floated by looked atoms rifted from the sky black barks before me then did glide whose sails were blacker than the tide peopled by wild and frantic ghouls strange skeletons as black as coals who on those ghostly decks had met to quaff black blood from cups of jet the land i found so bright and warm was stricken by a scathing storm its fruits and flowers of late so fair hung now like ebon cinders there and groves which erst were green as spring looked blacker than the raven's wing so freezing cold the wind had grown i seemed within the frozen zone and snow came drifting to the earth black as the clouds that gave it birth i saw it all though wrapped in night plainly as if revealed by light that rayless dense unbroken gloom was suffocating as the tomb to those who from long trances wake and strive their coffin lids to break discovered when too late to save who slept to wake within the grave their agony though keen is brief but death came not to my relief upon that cold and dismal brink i stooped my head and strove to drink the murky waves 
when through the dark came gliding up a spectral bark i climbed the deck where demons stood and quenched my thirst at last in blood they pledged me in that draught accursed and still i drank to quench my thirst unmindful that our black bark swept to where those maddened waters leapt into that fathomless abyss until i heard them scream and hiss within my ears on on we dashed while mid those jetty crags loud crashed our sinking ship on on we rushed till masts and timbers all were crushed when blind with blackness mid the roar of inky waves i heard no more end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the old church by jean blewett read for librivox dot org by larry wilson the fine new cook is finished wife the old has had its day tis like ourselves a trifle worn and out of date in gray stained windows and a tower high i like not such a show beside the cost is something great and the money does not grow now when they come to me for help i'm going to tell them plain that since they've built to please themselves they'll ask my help in vain then sat the woman at his side tis meet god's house should be as good a one as we can give she answered tenderly and we who've worshipped all the years in that old church so gray should go with songs and thankful hearts into the new to-day for think of all the precious hours we have had over there the hours of penitence and tears the hours of peace and prayer i went to-day to say good-bye and as i stood alone the memory of blessing shared came to me one by one i heard the message from the word the sermon good and wise i heard the song of love and hope ring clearly to the skies and looking over to the pew we've worshipped in for years i seem to see so many things to see them through my tears i saw us sitting there when we were young and glad and strong ere we had learned that sorrow lends a sweetness to life's song when every golden sabbath day found us in love with life the world was fair and god was good and we were man and wife one pretty far-off summer morn my dim eyes seemed to see a morn when i sat by your side our first-born on my knee his fair head lay upon my arm and rich was i and proud i whispered in the master's ear things spoken not aloud and then our other bonny lads grew plain into my eyes and bell our lassie fair and good our lassie sweet and wise i felt again her little hand clasped tightly in my own a mother holds her daughter dear and i had but the one my soft-eyed one my loving one with braids of yellow hair ah me i could not help but know the little one was fair in the old church i thought upon our hour of grief and pain of loneliness she went away and came not back again when broken-hearted neath the loss we bowed beneath the rod there close about us in that hour we felt the arm of god i saw us older grown and bent each tall son in his place i saw the minister who stood with heaven in his face his worn old face we love so well his eyes that seem to see the golden light that lights the shore of god's eternity and yet how simple was his heart how kindly was his way and how he cared for all his flock nor wearied night nor day if one strayed far he followed it and won it back to the fold if one fell down he lifted it with tenderness untold he fell asleep his labour done how sweet must be the rest of one who made his motto this the lord shall have my best good-bye old church good-bye i said 
and left its portals wide and then i turned and looked upon the new church just beside upon its windows tall and stained with yellow sunbeams played it stood the temple of the lord in loveliness arrayed i thought she said and stroked his hand of one who takes his rest i seemed to hear his deep voice say the lord shall have my best the sun crept lower in the sky the world lay sweet and fair a bird trilled softly from its throat a song that was a prayer the old man looked up at his wife with tears his cheek were wet ay there are many things he said we may not dear forget we're growing old wife like the day our sun sinks in the west i'll say with him we both loved well the lord shall have my best in the poem this recording is in the public domain the pessimist by g k chesterton read for librivox dot org by larry wilson you that have snarled through the ages take your answer and go i know your hoary question the riddle that all men know you have weighed the stars in a balance and grasped the skies in a span take if you must have answer the word of a common man deep in my life lies buried one love unhealed unshriven one hunger still shall haunt me yea in the streets of heaven this is the burden babbler this is the curse shall cling this is the thing i bring you this is the pleasant thing gainst you all your sages no joy of mine shall strive this one dead self shall shatter the men you call alive my grief i send to smite you no pleasure no belief lord of the battered grievance what do you know of grief i only know the praises to heaven that one man gave that he came on earth for an instant to stand beside a grave the peace of a field of battle where flowers are born of blood i only know one evil that makes the whole world good beneath this single sorrow the globe of moon and sphere turns to a single jewel so bright and brittle and dear that i dread lest god should drop it to be dashed into stars below you that have snarled through the ages take your answer and go end of poem this recording is in the public domain Portrait by William Faulkner Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp Raise your hand between us to your face And draw the opaque curtains on your eyes Let us walk here softly checked with shadow And talk of careful trivialities Let us lightly speak at random Tonight's movie Repeat a broken conversation, word for word, of friends and happiness. The darkness scurries, and we hear again a music both have heard singing blood to blood between our palms. Come, lift your eyes, your tiny scrap of mouth so lightly mobile on your dim white face. Aloofly talk of life, profound in youth, and simple also young and white and strange you walk beside me down this shadowed street against my hand your small breast softly lies and your laughter breaks the rhythm of our feet you are so young and frankly you believe this world this darkened street this shadowed wall are dim with beauty you passionately know cannot fade nor cool nor die at all raise your hand then to your scarce seen face and draw the opaque curtains on your eyes profoundly speak of life of simple truths the while your voice is clear with frank surprise and a poem this recording is in the public domain seasons by lewis morris Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. 
the cold winds rave on the icy river the leafless branches complain and shiver the snow clouds sweep on to a dreary tune can these be the earth and the heavens of june when the blossoming trees gleam in virginal white and heaven's gate opens wide in the lucid night and there comes no sound in the perfumed air by the passionate brown bird caroling fair and the lush grass and upland and lowland stands deep and the loud land rail lulls the children to sleep and the white still road and the thick-leaved wood are haunted by fanciful solitude and by garden and lane men and maidens walk busied with trivial lover-like talk and the white and the red rose newly blown open each with a perfume and grace of its own the cold wind sweeps o'er the desolate hill the stream is bound fast and the wolves are chill and by the dead flats where the cold blasts moan a bent body wearily plods alone end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Still of the Year by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Up from the willow root, subduing agony's leap, The squirrel and the purple moth turn over amid their sleep. The icicled rocks aloft burn saffron and blue alway, And trickling and tinkling the snows of the drift decay o oh, mine is the head must hang and share the immortal pang winter or spring is fair thaws hard to bear hi ho my heart's sick sweet is cherry time sweet a shower a bobolink and the little trillium blossom tucked under her leaf to think but here in the vast unborn is the bitterest place to be till striving and longing shall quicken the earth and me what change inscrutable is nigh us we know not well gone is the strength to sigh either to live or die Hi ho my heart's sick end of poem this recording is in the public domain there is no god the wicked saith by arthur hugh clough read for librivox dot org by algy pug there is no god the wicked saith and truly it's a blessing for what he might have done with us it's better only guessing there is no god a youngster thinks or really if there may be he surely did not mean a man always to be a baby there is no god or if there is the tradesman thinks twere funny if he should take it ill in me to make a little money whether there be the rich man says it matters very little for i and mine thanks somebody are not in want of victual some others also to themselves who scarce so much as doubt it, think there is none when they are well, and do not think about it. But country folks, who live beneath the shadow of the steeple, the parson and the parson's wife, and mostly married people, youths green and happy in first love, so thankful for illusion, are men caught out in what the world calls guilt, in first confusion. And almost every one, when age, disease, or sorrows strike him, inclines to think there is a God, or something very like him. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To My Mother by Edgar Allan Poe Read for LibriVox.org by APUS Poetry Student because I feel that, in the heavens above, 
the angels whispering to one another can find among their burning terms of love none so devotional as that of mother therefore by that dear name i long have called you you who are more than mother unto me and fill my hearts of hearts where death installed you in setting my virginia spirit free my mother my own mother who died early was but the mother of myself but you are mother to the one i loved so dearly and thus are dearer than the mother i knew by that infinity with which my wife was dearer to my soul than its soul life end of poem this recording is in the public domain william hamilton gibson by rosita johnson read for librivox dot org by sonia william hamilton gibson who nature loves by nature is beloved she makes him gentle and she keeps him fair by woods and waters where her treasures are within his hand she lays a hand ungloved for him no stream is stopped no mountain moved no bird song hushed nor any branch made bare useless the archer's shaft the fowler's snare nor for his feet is any pathway grooved so gibson lived and wrote and drew and dreamed whose sun too early dropped adown the west whose every day with purest visions teemed that gave another stay a fresher zest and like dear nature's self he often seemed to draw no lines twixt labor play and rest end of poem this recording is in the public domain